Sai Baba is a phenomena the like of which has never visited this planet before. Why is he here? He is here on a mission to move mankind to a new age. Um, I have not the slightest reservation that Sai Baba in his next 20 years is moving mankind and pushing mankind to a global civilization. This is the book. Uh, Leadership Book for Youth, Parents and Teachers, Education and Human Values. Yes. And he told you to write this? He not only told, he <laughs> made me sit down and uh, it took two months to clear up concepts and uh, he guided everything. And he's, it's the only book on which Swami has written a foreword in his own hand. That's the foreword? That's the foreword by Swami. Bhagwan Sri Satya Sai Baba, Forward Leadership and Idealism in Action. And he writes it and he signs it from December 1993. With love, Baba. I was responsible, I was the Adjutant General of the Indian Army. Responsibility for personnel. An Indian Army is a multi-religious army. Mm -hmm. And when I saw this emblem, it triggered an idea which eventually developed into setting up the Army Institute of National Integration. Uh, India had never had this before. Never had this. But um, in spite of all these differences which are visible today on the world, this institute has played a very cardinal role. And it's very simple uh, to tell each religious group their own basic religion but also familiarize them with other religions eventually understanding that there is just one God. <laughs> <laughs> of course that's exactly what Sai Baba said. That's right. He is a man of many strengths and great faith. Lieutenant General Dr. M. L. Chibber. Dr. Chibber left the Indian Army in 1985 and for a long time now has been a follower of holy man Sri Sancha Sai Baba. In the Army for more than 40 years, he was highly regarded as Adjutant General and Director of the Military Operations, and then served as Visiting Professor at Sai Baba's University in Puttaparthi. Welcome to Sojourns. This interview was recorded overlooking Central Park in Sai Baba devotee Hal Honig's apartment in New York City in September 2003. You see, uh, Hal was there with a group of young adults, and Baba showered his love on them. I think you had eight or nine interviews, and he loaded them with goodies. And some time later, one day he called Hal and this body, and one more person, I forget who it was. And we talked about various things, and he suddenly looked at Hal and said, uh, Hal, what is youth? And Hal said, Swami, Youth is determination because he was teaching them determination, repeating over and over again. And then he asked Hal, determination for what? <laughs> Hal was foxed, he looked at me. I was even more foxed and I looked out of the door. <laughs> then he gave this input. He said, determination to keep your senses under control with, and he used this gesture, unwavering steadiness. And then he went on to explain it. In brief, he said, look at Mahabharata. The commander-in-chief of the bad guys, Bhishma, was 114 years old, and he's a youthful commander-in-chief because he had led a life with unwavering steadiness control over his senses. And then he ended up by saying that if you have your senses under control, you can be youth at the age of 80. And if you don't have your senses under control, you can be an old person at the age of 18. And that lesson 
always sticks in my mind as an input. It was after this book, but input where of what he taught once that determination is the king of all qualities of human beings for evolution also. To understand who we are requires determination, tenacity, perseverance. And I think that lesson has made a deep impact on me. Oh, that's a wonderful story. Is that part. But you see, ultimately our role as human beings is to understand who we really are. The only quest I pray to Baba is to uh, reach this constant awareness that this body is a temporary housing for the real Chiba, the real I. Chiba is a temporary drama name. <laughs> You know, Hal, it's, it's amazing that you say that um, Swami might object to violence. Can I give you uh, some, Absolutely, some yeah. input on that? Yeah, sure, because you I'd see, love you to give it to my When, uh, when uh, this leadership uh, yeah. uh, teaching was going on in, the, in, 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 the, in Swami's university, I wanted to show them a film called 12 O'Clock High. Yeah, I know the you, film. You remember? Yeah, sure. Yeah. And um, I acquired the film because it's a very popular film for leadership. Uh -huh. And um, I showed it to the faculty. Everybody liked it. And since somebody raised the question, uh, can we show this film when nonviolence is a value that Swami teaches? So I said, well, nobody could take a decision. So I said, um, everybody said, we must ask, the, ask Swami about it. So I asked the dean, I said, uh, you ask it. He said, not me, it's your idea. You are. I, I went and sat up with the film, and Swami knows everything. Uh, when he called that very afternoon, he called people in interview, he called me also. And I was carrying this uh, cassette. He said, what's the problem? I said, Swami, we wanted to show this film. And uh, some of us feel that uh, maybe it's not right to show this because it's, it's a war picture. He says, where is the problem? There's a war going on inside all of us, all the time. We went and showed the film. And this film, if you remember, we showed it in the workshops around the world. Yeah. You see, today at a very interesting stage, you know, you all are in Iraq, you are in Afghanistan, uh, there's big trouble in Palestine. Korea. Korea. Now, people get concerned and disheartened. For God's sake, don't let people get disheartened. That's the point I was asking about earlier. Yeah, yeah. You must stay the course because it's a tremendous accelerating opportunity for mankind to pick up its pace and move to a new world. One question about that. As a journalist, it's of endless intrigue to me. Let's say two examples. The Palestinians decide to put down their arms and all of a sudden they feel they're being attacked by Israel. The Israelis put down their arms and they feel they're being attacked by Palestine. Yeah. It goes back and forth, yeah. back and forth. Same way with Kashmir, yeah. with Pakistan, yeah. with India. Yeah. Same way in Northern Ireland. Mm. What is it in your estimation having been there that's going to one day cause the cessation of violence this tit for tat that goes back and forth endlessly. Mm. And can Baba be of help? Yeah. You see, at the source of this tit and tat is a lethal combination of king and clergy. King and clergy? Yes. It has happened in all civilizations in the last 3,000 years. The earliest was in India. So you're saying these are all wars of religion? Not religion, exploitation of religion. Exploitation of religion. You see, Voltaire uh, was the first guy who articulated this, that this lethal combination has played up havoc into mankind, this combination of king and, or in today's word, power brokers and marketing managers of religions who exploit God as a smokescreen, sheerly for power. And it is here that Baba's teachings come, become relevant. And he's given a beautiful blueprint for the future civilization. It's not that he's talking fuzzily. And he says on this planet, 
there is only one nation, nation of humanity. There is only one religion, religion of love. There is only one language, language of heart. And there is only one God, and he is omnipresent. So, these are not empty words. This is a scientific reality. Then how can each of us in our own individual silent way mm. work according to Baba's will mm. to contribute towards that ultimate goal of global peace? Yes. Uh, understand his teachings and reprogram ourselves to become persons of character. And if you like, I hope I'm carrying a card, I must give it to you. Just one minute. Okay. The end product Oh, I see what you're getting at. Our effort should be to answer this question. Are you a person of, of character? character? And that person has been described at the back from this book. An honest person, Satya, and Dharma, a person who has sense of duties and obligations of his position, whatever it may be, Dharma, a person who tells the truth, Satya, a person who gives others their due, Prima, person who can consider it of the weak, ahimsa, oh. a person who has principles and stands by them, dharma, a person not too elated by good fortune and not too depressed by bad, santi, I would call that equanimity too, a person who is loyal and a person who can be trusted. And if you read this book, General Matthew B. Ridgway has described a person of character. In different words, the sense is exactly the same. What did bring you initially to Sai Baba? Oh, uh, it was a long search. Uh, we went around the mulberry bush of spirituality, a um, number of gurus number of wise people and then somebody gave us a book by Harvard Muffet uh, and she got a book from her brother uh, one of these annual publications and more or less how many years ago was this this was in 79 okay and had you ever heard of Sai Baba until that time no I had I in 75 I was commanding a division on India-Pakistan border at Amritsar. Baba had come there and we were invited to be there. But then the time was not right. <laughs> Foolishly, uh, I gave priority to some conference and didn't go there. I wish I had. And then later, when you had a chance to explore the writings of Howard Murphitt, was it by a book that you first found out about Sai Baba? Yeah. How, Howard Murphitt's book? Reading that book gave me a feeling that uh, maybe there is something which we unknowingly were searching might be found from him. And in your childhood, in your uh, young adulthood, surely you were exposed to a multitude of spiritual ideas and spiritual paths. Yes. Uh, spiritual ideas were there that there is a God and you go looking for it and uh, for many years we used to go looking for Shiva in the Himalayas uh, but the, the idea as to what God is was not quite clear and uh, on, after reading that book she organized a bhajan in the army house there at where I was posted I was then commanding our country's uh, uh, strike call and um, that bhajan was done by the local Sai organization at a place called Chandigarh, okay. which is capital of uh, Punjab. Mm -hmm. And that bhajan did something which is very difficult to put in words. But both of us felt that perhaps we found our way home. Now, in Indian culture and in Hinduism, you were already familiar with bhajans, correct? That's right, yes. What was it about these bhajans that set them apart from the others? It was, I think, the... Uh